My name's Sam Alley. I run the uh, creative space called The Commune over in Erskineville in Sydney. Um, the space is generally a desk space for freelancers to run their businesses from, but we also like to put on events and workshops um, and pop-up events su such as the Nomad Barber cutting at Commune. So what we're also trying to do with events like this is uh, collaborate with other creatives that maybe people don't usually think about, um, like barbering, um, got tattoo artists, chefs, uh, mixologists, baristas, uh, brewers, that sort of thing. Cool, so the Cutting at the Commune event first came about, uh, but the plans went into place about a month ago when Sam contacted me via Instagram actually, and he said, are you coming to Australia? I said, yeah, in a month. Um, I checked out the space, the commune, and I thought it was really cool. The space, there's lots going on, and I've seen that they do events here. And I think we both had the same idea that I could basically come down here and set up like a pop-up shop. Uh, it's great to see how barbering can sort of work with other creative fields and just a space like this to, to create something like a fun event for the day. So, uh, yeah, I'm really glad I came down, and it was, uh, it was really nice to come down and I cut the hair of you know people who've been following us, uh, locals, people who work here, and it was great just to hang out, have a barbecue, have some beers, and just yeah, hang out for the day and talk about the trip, and you know really get to know people who you know, I only know by names on Instagram. So, so we got Mark Powell down here in Sydney, Australia, and he actually was my college tutor a long time ago back in Liverpool. A long time. Uh, <laughs> long time. Um, and he's gonna just talk to us generally about barbering and the education because he was a college teacher, so let's see what he's gonna say. Okay, well I was teaching the MVQs for about 15 years at Liverpool Community College. Uh, eventually got out of it mainly because I think it's become more paper-based and I like teaching. I like teaching the actual skills and I understand that theory and all that has to go along with it, which is very important and that's very important. But I think some of it got a bit too much, so even marking case box now is like a major effort so I could spend you know two hours filling in someone's portfolio whereas I'd rather spend two hours teaching that person to go there and I think that's the downside of MVQs. You run a successful barbershop obviously in Liverpool it's been yeah. there for a long time a super long time because you're getting old now. Well I'm um, <laughs> this week uh, believe it or not I've been uh, 45 years in the business this year Okay. I'm 60 now and I started when I was, well, I started when I was 14, 15 properly because my dad in the shop. Yeah. My dad was a barber, my mum's a hairdresser, I've got a brother who's a barber and my two sisters are hairdressers so it's in the family. So um, yeah, I love my job, I still love it now. Can you tell us about like the ups and downs you've had over the years? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Mostly been ups because I've enjoyed my job, so I do enjoy it. I suppose I love working with people but staff is the biggest problem. Um, you train people up, they get very good, they move on. Once you begin to accept that that will happen, not always, but it does happen a lot, I think you can get on the job a lot easier and sort of enjoy it yourself. And I've got a fairly good, I've got very good staff working for me now and they've been with me for a while. So people come and go, it's the nature of the job if you accept that when you've got it. But, um, and I've had some bad ones over the years, but you get to learn to, again how not to take them on again. So that's, that's one of the, the problems of staff. And what do you think of like uh, how you've seen today you came down to the commune and you've seen like this all happen and how do you how do you see like Barbara and collaborating with like random things like this? Well I think this is a brilliant thing. I think the fact that you it's on Facebook and all that this is Barbara connecting that's going on now, all this thing I think it's more about Barbara and being a separate entity from hairdressing. You know, I've always said I actually did it when I did my teaching course to be a teacher trained in barbers, I did a report on training men's hairdressing. And I, and it might be a bit um, for me to say so, but a lot of the things that have happened now were in that report that I did in about 1982. It wasn't because of me, because it wasn't people looked at my report and said, do this. But if I got that report out now and said, that needs to change, that needs to change, the first thing I said is, barbering and hairdressing needs to be two separate things. Not always, because some shops work very well as hairdressers and barbers. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But I think barbering is a skill. I think it, there might have been on the course that you were on, there were some ladies hairdressers who had done level three ladies hairdressing, came onto the barbering course and thought it'd be a doddle. And they suddenly went, we can't do this, we can't do that. Well, you know, people who are good barbers can't necessarily walk into a ladies hairdresser and do their skills. There's, there's crossover without a doubt. But barbering needs to be a separate skill on its own. People need to recognise it for what it is. And that's why I think what, what you're doing is bringing it to the fore a bit more. And making it seem a bit more credible, you know, that's a good thing. 
So my wife here, Yvette, follows um, Miguel on Instagram, and that's how we found out that, uh, about what he's trying to do, traveling the world, cutting hair, which I thought was pretty amazing, right? And, um, and we just came back from the Philippines, and it, it, two days ago we arrived, and you know, luckily he was here you know, during this time. And we were still in Manila when he actually, she actually booked the, the, you know, the cuts for us, which is pretty, worked out pretty well. Um, well, through Instagram, a lot of barbers have Instagram these days, so um, I was just flipping through Instagram one day, and this guy, I know, he, he liked this photo, and it was one of uh, Miguel's photos. Um, I didn't look at it, I think I just, I think I just flipped through it, I looked at it, yeah, I liked it, and then I followed, it. I started following him, and ever since then, I kept on getting every video, go on YouTube, and I was like, this looks interesting, so... I was like, all right, I'll check it out, go on YouTube. And then ever since then, I got hooked on all the videos every time you bring out a video. So we've been following Miguel for a few months now on Instagram and YouTube. And uh, when we found out he was coming to Sydney, we were just so excited because we thought it'd be a great opportunity for um, the commune and the Nomad Barber to collaborate and show how um, the space can be used to showcase pretty much any sort of creative field. So it was great to come down to a space where, you know, uh, you've got Sam, who's a graphic designer and a photographer, and you've got me, who's a barber, and we can collaborate and, you know, make such a cool event where, like, people come down, have a drink, get the haircut. Uh, I hope it'll inspire people in the future and open doors for other people to collaborate, especially barbers thinking outside the box and maybe creative spaces to think about actually accepting barbering as a creative field. Uh, like, down here, they have tattoo artists, you know, baristas, food people, they got the brewers, Young Henrys, they come down and do stuff with them. Um, so hopefully in the future we can collaborate more.